Okay, right away, I want to thank you all for 320,000 subscribers. The growth has been awesome lately, and I wanted to make sure that you all know that I appreciate you. 400,000 subscribers, here we come. Anyway, every once in a while, I like to think about all the variety of replicas that we have at our disposal in the game of Airsoft. Sure, you can rock an AK or an M4 or even a G36 and never try anything else. I won't be upset at anyone for that. However, if you love messing around with the weird and unique and uncommon and the rare, you really get to enjoy the freedoms that the game has to offer. Where else would you be able to rock a pair of Golden Desert Eagles against your friends as your teammate backs you up with an L86 LSW? I've been playing for a long while now, and I always love the variety, but out of the thousands of replicas I've seen, would I consider some of them utterly pointless? Well, kinda. That's not to say that you can't enjoy using them. Heck, everything I'm about to talk about in this video I would love to add to my collection, so I definitely don't want to make anyone feel bad about themselves. Play the way you want to. I'm just here to make a list of seven pointless airsoft replicas. They might be a whole bunch of fun to use or mess around with, but the weight, reloads, or the support for these replicas just doesn't make much sense if you compare them to their competitors. Now, of course, you know I want to thank G&G Armament for sponsoring this countdown. I'm still enjoying their MXC9, and I can't think of any replicas that they make that will be on this list. And to all the people that have been using coupon code SCOTT at SS Airsoft, thank you. Every time you check out with them and use our code, it directly helps the channel. So why not see what they've got going on and grab some new gear while you're at it. But okay, let's get this thing started with number seven. This is actually a call out on myself because I've always thought that the Desert Eagle is pretty pointless and yet I love them. I even got these golden models from SS Airsoft and they're freaking beautiful because it's the Desert Eagle. Say anything you want, people are still gonna want these. But to explain why I think they're pointless, I would look at the disadvantages of the real thing. It's worse in Airsoft though. Really, besides looks, what advantages does the Desert Eagle offer you? They're of course enormous, you have limited holster options, upgrade parts are limited, sights are not too stand out, and they're a lot heavier compared to high kappas or the SIGs and Glocks that everyone else is using. The Mark 23 wouldn't be too far off from the Desert Eagle if it wasn't for the plastic construction and non-blowback nature that the most popular versions offer. But the one good thing going for the Desert Eagle, besides the looks and celebrity status, is the ammo capacity in each magazine. That's the saving grace. You get 21 rounds with the WE Tech models, or 27 rounds with the Tokyo Marui Desert Eagle magazines. And that's pretty nice if you compare it to a high kappa. No matter what, I still love the Desert Eagle, and I'd love to collect a few more of them. So just like everything else I'll mention here, Go get the one you want, and don't let anyone else hold you back. Be as unique as you want to be. However, at the sixth spot, can we agree that miniguns are pretty pointless in Airsoft? I mean, if you think about it, why was the original minigun made? For aircraft and door gunners, right? You're supposed to use one to put a huge volume of fire down to improve your odds of getting a hit while flying around. Well, we don't fly around very much in Airsoft, and most AEGs do suppress a fire a whole lot better than the miniguns and microguns can pull off. This doesn't really matter much, because almost everyone wants a minigun, just like me. But they're a hassle to use or even move around with. The M134 miniguns will weigh about 40 pounds, you'll need HPA tanks or big batteries, you'll blow through ammo fast, range and accuracy tends to suck, and the price tags are in the multiples of thousands of dollars, excluding the microgun. But I'm specifically talking about the six-barreled M134s. You pay for the fame. It's a minigun. Come on. Everyone wants to mess around with one at least once. You could completely hate the idea of anyone paying three or four thousand dollars on an airsoft replica or hate airsoft altogether, but you'd be hard to find anyone that wouldn't want to pick one of these up. But everything this can do 
a good DSG or even a single sector gear M4 with a good battery can do better for a 20th of the price. And if you still don't think so, well, just know that I've never heard a single minigun owner talk about the amazing and stellar performance that his M134 gives. I still want to put one on a minivan, though. Minigun, minivan. Minivan, minigun. Hmm. And that's everybody downrange now dead. These next two are going to make a lot of sense to most people out there. Face it, anything that's shell ejecting. Bad idea. I've said this before, but shell ejecting replicas besides some shoddies really don't offer anything worthwhile. Even if you just have one to mess around with when you're at home, you'll probably lose a shell or two and have to deal with a bunch of jams. Do you remember the Car 98K by D Boys? It's funny to think that these got a lot of hype almost 11 years ago, but have you ever seen one on a field get 300 foot shots or even 200 foot shots? And to think about it, how many versions of shell ejecting car 98s do we have in the game now? Would a shell ejecting Barrett be fun to mess around with in your living room or in the backyard from your patio? Absolutely. But you look at the prices that these shells go for and tell me that you're insane enough to use that Barrett at a Milsom event. For YouTube content, they absolutely get your attention and help videos get views. That's been proven over and over again. But how would you defend revolvers? I know that APS Cam 870s are shell ejecting, but those get a pass because they're actually good pieces. Just invest in a shell net. Trust me, you'll save money if you do. But revolvers? How are those useless? Well, that's pretty simple. Any sidearm that can hold over six rounds is automatically ahead of almost every revolver made for Airsoft. You give me one revolver that is beloved by the community, that isn't the Elite Force hater. You can't do it. And I mean beloved to the point that you might say that they're overused. I can only think of the Elite Force hater, but the hater is cheap, it comes with a lot of Oreo magazines or moon clips in the box, any beginner can use it, and it's got an adjustable hop up and so on. My Dan Wesson from ASG, on the other hand, well, I can't even use it in a game since it fires way too hot. My beautiful Tanaka M500 Performance Center? It's all plastic, can't shoot straight, and it shouldn't really be used with green gas, and reloads are very strange. I won't say anything about it being the size of my femur since that's unfair, but what about the Elite Force Smoke Wagon? Well, let me just mention that it still uses shells like most other revolvers and close the book there. It is useful for old western games though. One more thing, this is a reload with most airsoft revolvers. And this is a reload with just about everything else that's used at 99% of airsoft games. Not to bash on revolvers so badly, after all I love mine. But if you're really honest, there's a lot of reasons they're not popular for skirmishing. More like non-existent than just unpopular. I don't mean to sound so negative, but that's the nature of this list, isn't it? If you like, maybe we can put together a list over the most useful airsoft replicas. Hit the like button down below if you like that idea, because I'd be up to put it together. Now let's continue along at the third spot. Anything lever action has to be on here. Unless you're using one at an old west game, what other practical reasons are you using these for? Let's take the old Marushan Winchester M1887 for example. Even if it wasn't shell ejecting, I wouldn't try to use this against even a spring tri-shot SEMA shoddy. A gas-powered, non-shell ejecting M1887 sounds freaking awesome, but as these are now, it wouldn't make any sense unless I just want to make a video out of it. What about this A&K lever action that a fan gave me a while ago at SS Airsoft? Well, first, if you're watching this video, then thank you very much. I never got your name, but I appreciate you letting me add this to my collection so I can use it for examples like this one. So reloads with this are way more annoying than something like a Tokumari Spass 12. You'll want to be careful when using the lever too. Use some gloves because you'll definitely jam your finger at least once using one of these. I've seen it before and it's never fun. Funny enough, that happened to the only person I've ever seen run any lever action at a game, and he was doing it just for a good laugh at a weekend skirmish. 
They're usually not very compact, great at any performance, unlike their direct competition, being the bolt actions or pump actions. And if you want to be competitive with one of these against any semi-auto or full auto capable replica, you better have the fastest and most accurate reflexes at that venue or you're gonna get steamrolled. They may be some of the most satisfying types of replicas in the entire game, but I don't think lever actions can really compete with the common choices out there. But if you think otherwise, then be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Moving on, at the runner-up spot, I don't have any real reason as to why anyone would ever pick one of these to seriously compete against anyone. Come to think about it, have you ever seen an airsoft RPG fire and then immediately get disappointed? You can say the same for a few other models like these bazookas or anything else that you can't shove a Nerf football into or a tag and shell. Even these older GP25s are pretty useless. They sure do look pretty good though. Besides completing a loadout or using one because fuck you, I love this thing, which I follow nearly every time I play airsoft, why would you ever pick one of these over anything that can launch a tag in at a big event or milsim? You're not actually destroying vehicles or targeting anything in the air. So these are useful for what? I'm not talking about the ones that actually fire stuff like these though. Those are better, but these types of launchers are more embarrassing if anything else. I might get one as a showpiece, but I don't think I'll ever take one out to a field game with any seriousness in my mind. Then finally, after all that, I have one more category of replicas. These are probably the best looking or coolest things to bring out to a field, and you'll certainly get a lot of attention. But I still gotta say that big anti-material replicas or enormous heavyweights like 50 cal lookalikes and the shy tac intervention are probably the most pointless replicas that I can think of. These can weigh over 20 pounds, and sometimes I'll still see someone trying to use one as an effective sniper rifle. Although, just one of these can weigh over three times what a VSR-10 would weigh. And you don't even get the kind of customization that a VSR-10 or an L96 or even an SRS has. So should we only use VSR-10s? No, use anything you want. I think I've made that clear by now. Who cares what anyone else thinks as long as you're having fun and you're following the rules? I'm just saying that it doesn't make much practical sense to bring along a SOCOM gear M82 Barrett to a field when something like an M110 or an SVD can do the same thing, if not a whole lot better, in so many ways. There's no point in buying a multi-thousand dollar Browning M2 if your main goal is to lay down suppressive fire. Just get an M249. Once you get past the 10 pound limit, that's when you should probably look at the practicality of your replica. That is, if you care about that sort of thing. Personally, I think I'd rather do what I want to do on the field and use anything I can dream of. You can think that anything beyond the M4 or the AK and a high kappa or a Glock is pointless, but then you're missing the point of the game, right? I like being unique, even if that means that nothing I'm using is practical. And I think that you should feel the freedom of being as unique as you want to be. Now, even though this video might have sounded like a bunch of nitpicking, I hope you enjoyed this video. But please let me know in the comments what you think isn't really pointless, or if I missed something that should have been on this list. Because I can always make a part two. Again, I want to thank GNG Armament for their continued support, and I want to thank SS Airsoft for everything they do to keep the channel going. Just make sure to use that coupon code anytime you need anything from high cap of parts, dye masks, BBs, magazines, or anything else you can think of. You even get store credit every time you check out with them. So that's always good. But until that next video drops from the city of Dallas, Texas, this has been Scott Hollenbeck, and I will be sure to see you all next time. Okay, I'm going to see if I can do this all in one take. Um, I wanted to quickly thank all the new channel members. As you guys can see, so many people have joined. We have like 104 channel members, and there's so many ideas that are going through my mind that we could make all sorts of different, all sorts of different videos. Uh, I want to do my collection video soon, my updated collection video. I don't know exactly how I want to do it yet. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of unboxing videos. But uh, my 
laptop's dying. It's almost two in the morning. Um, I'm just about to finish the countdown that you guys have just watched. Um, also, uh, with the amount of new channel members, um, we're going to have all sorts of new funding to do all sorts of crazy new stuff and get some new equipment that we really do need. Um, I just really want to thank every single person that's become a channel member lately. Like, again, 104 channel members. That's ridiculous. Of course, uh, we're going to be doing more giveaways for channel members so I can really show them more appreciation uh, because you guys really, really do deserve it. I very much appreciate all the support that you guys have been giving lately. Uh, we broke 320,000 subscribers, and we're already about to break another 1,000 subscribers. So it's been freaking awesome. But um, everybody on the screen, very much appreciate you guys. Uh, I've got so much more stuff on the way. And again, thank you all for so much support. You guys have been freaking awesome. See you all around. I'm going to just finish up this video now and then go to bed. Good night, everyone, or good morning. <laughs>